Outstanding. Pow! BadEnzo.com I believe that the freedom of speech is a universal international right, that all opinions shall be tolerated regardless if agreeable or disagreeable. I believe in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, the freedom of expression, the freedom of religion, not from it, the freedom of the press, the right of the people to peaceably assemble, be it physically or spiritually or digitally or virtually. I believe in the separation of church and state and corporation. I believe that truth is non-binary and can be objective, subjective, normative, or complex. There are no eternal facts as there are no absolute truths except the word of God. For us creators and for our content, great thinkers have philosophized. And our founding fathers debated the dangers of cancellation and censorship for centuries. No individual shall be indemnified of criticism or mockery. For there is honesty and jest. I pledge that the ideas I share are my own and are not the expressed opinions of any violent criminal organizations. The only group I represent is the human race. And I reserve the right to interview any of my counterparts without fear, threat, or intimidation. Would their opinions be in their own? Would my opinions be in my own? For association does not always equal shared beliefs. I pledge to perform in a professional, dignified manner and not bully, harass, or slander my fellow human creatures, to refrain from hate, anger, sedition, vulgarity, harassment, pornography, cautioning that satire and sarcasm can at times be misinterpreted as such. I believe in the counter-speech doctrine, that the remedy to negative, harmful speech is more positive, helpful speech, not enforce silence, that no person shall be denied access to social media, which is the marketplace of ideas, in today's town square, that Section 230 privatizes communism, legalizes libel and stalking, and that content creators who have broken community guidelines in the past deserve retribution because we're all constituents of the human party and humans are fallible. Amen. Outstanding. Pow. All right. Settle in, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bad. This Benzo. is the Fat Enzo Bad. Show, Bad. if you don't Bad. know. title of uh, today's Benzo. episode is Bad. Jesus Bad. Played Bad. Hide and Seek Bad. with the Jews. Bad. I know it sounds a little insane, but you'll probably, you'll understand it when we do our readings. And, uh, you know, this is just your based Catholic liturgy show. We are Bordeaux in the Novus Ordo. But, hey, the Novus Ordo is what we grew up with. So there's some tradition there too. So we're gonna look fond on that, and we're gonna cover that all the uh, the readings of the day and the saint of the day according to the Novus Ordo, because that's just the mainstream Catholicism. But we're gonna make it fun, and we're gonna do some Latin. We always do the Latin of the day, and I do this more for myself than for you guys. So I don't care if anybody really even watches; it doesn't particularly matter to me. We don't have any uh, guests on today. This is just straight facts. Just We're just going to do a quick little episode here. We're going to be p- painting, painting pretty little trees and, and uh, creating pretty little episodes. Just going to cover the, uh, the readings of today, Thursday, the fifth week of Lent, March 30th, 2023. Which is the year of our Lord. 2023 years since Jesus Christ walked the earth. Good day, do followers. This is your based Catholic liturgy program. It's the Holy Ghost daily dose of digital divinity. And if you don't know, now you know the Fat Enzo Show is Latin for podcast. Today we'll cover the good news from the book and the bad news of the world. And now, your host, a former altar boy who couldn't get molested in the basement of a rectory, Robert Robert. Vincent. Vincent. Picharillo. All righty, I am here in... Here for your Catholic podcast of the day. Let me go through all the uh, information that you're going to need as a good Catholic. Um, we are going to cover the uh, the saints of the day. We're going to cover the readings. And then we're going to do the Latin of the day. We're going to do a short, nice little episode. Tomorrow, I'll have some, some more for you guys. I've been off for... Um, couple quite a while gallivanting the United States I'll talk more about that what I did uh, uh 
over last weekend, I I, wa- I I marched five miles in a pilgrimage, um, the Samori- Samorium Pontificorum, something like that. But uh, is it's for the Washington D.C. Ch- or the Arlington chapter of um, the Latin Mass Society. We we basically I drove from Connecticut five miles. Uh, in the morning with no, hardly any sleep to march five miles in the rain and then drive five hours back, basically. Did you get that? I don't know if I uh, combobbled that because I just got a uh, text at the same time. But I uh, I drove five hours to walk five miles in the rain and then drive five hours back. All for Jesus Christ. Glory al Padre, glory al Hijo, glory al Espíritu Santo, como en un principio, ahora y siempre, por los siglos de los siglos. Amen. Anyway, let's do the um, let's do the readings now. Today, if you go to mass, if you're Bordeaux at the Novus Ordo, like me, and I am going to go to mass this morning because mass is awesome, regardless if you're doing the traditional or the Novus. There is a place in my heart for both. And uh, it brings you great peace. I prefer the Latin Mass over anything else, but it, it it does bring you great peace to eat the Eucharist and drink the the blood and um, and meditate. That's the most important thing: meditation, because meditation plus God equals peace. If you're new to meditation, just just do the sign of the cross and then just be quiet. That's it. So today, March thirtieth, in Mass, if you do go to Mass. Today's a Thursday of the uh, fifth week of Lent. God promises land, a great name, and divine favor to Abraham and his, his descendants. If only they would keep his covenant throughout the ages. Though generation after generation proved disobedient, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. In fact, he does more. The son who exists before Abraham ever was invites us into his own eternal life. Whoever keeps my word will never see death. Such is our inheritance. If today we hear his voice and harden not our hearts. All right, let's. So what is this really talking about? Let's do the um, the readings of the day. One second. Let me send this uh, message to somebody. Check my Twitter. We don't. This is a new um, stream here. I set up and uh, if it's not working on Rumble or or whatever or um, YouTube. Brand new YouTube channel too got totally axed. The beautiful YouTube channel I had built for the, since May twenty fifth of last year, uh, yeah, was totally just taken down for no reason. We didn't even get our we didn't get three strikes at all, and uh, those three strikes are ba- actually dished out way more heavily because there are people that are successful YouTubers who talk about stuff way more in depth than, than uh, I do. So anyway, I'm going to try to keep it to more about the Catholicism now and uh, less about the worldly stuff because if you, if you mention worldly things at all, you know, you're, you can get struck. P- politics, is, politics is a funny word. Politics is anything that's going on in society at all. You can't even talk about anything these days. On YouTube. Anyway, so the reading, first reading of today, let's do that. Oops. All right. Let me get my, my, uh, my, my narrator voice on. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram prostrated himself, God spoke to him. My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham, for I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I will make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you throughout the ages as an everlasting pact to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Canaan, as a permanent possession. 
and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, on your part, you and your descendants, after you must keep my covenant through the ages, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 105. And the responsorial is, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. And if you're singing along with me at home, ladies and gentlemen, do followers, please say with me, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents and the judgments he has uttered. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into the Abraham and with Abraham and by his own to oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Now we're going to go ahead and say the gospel. During Lent, you don't do the uh, alleluias. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. That's the verse before the gospel of the day. Let me go ahead and do the reading number two. Reading number two. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? Or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my days. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham? Yes, said to them. Jesus said to them, Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen. I said to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw it at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so now we see the combination here, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the connection here between reading one from the Old Testament to reading two in the New Testament. And, and just so you know, I am not a ordained priest. I'm not a prophet. I'm not a uh, saint. I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner like you. I'm just a person. I'm a podcaster who's done his research by going to mass every day, pretty much. I go very, very frequently. I'm the host who eats the host. Now, um, you can see this that this reading right here Jesus, they're talking about Abraham. They're bringing it back to Abraham. Abraham, we start with the reading number one, where we talk about Abraham and how all of his ancestors, God will look over. And and then when I think about that, I think about the Abrahamic religions. And I think, um, are all the Abrahamic religions, including is Islam, you know, the the good in Islam, not the bad, but the good in it, is it all just the same, really? I mean, is their prophet? I mean, I think that it's. I think that their prophet Muhammad is just. Uh, you know, he's the he's the prophet of the same God, and uh, maybe it took a person, and you know, God broke us all up into our own tribes. You know, you read that in the Tower of Babel. God was anti globalization, a hundred percent. You got to have your own cultures on this earth or they'll be able to wipe us all out. Look at what Elon Musk said. He said that 
um, at the the global um, summit, the basically the new world order, the the global government. They had a, a summit like a month ago, and he he said we need to steer away from this possibility of getting too close and and being too harmonious and getting along too much. Um, you know, because we need to maintain our cultural differences because that will ensure that humanity lives on. I think that's why God did that, you know? And so maybe these other religions, they're all just a language to God and it's created in the, in their, the own, um, uh, cultural diverse way to speak to these people, these different people all throughout the world. And I, you know, the Abraham religions, maybe there's a something that we can, we can uh, say pointing to this right here. The fact that God says you're going to be a, uh, you're going to be the father to a host of nations, right? If he's going to be the father to a host of nations, wouldn't that include all the Abrahamic religions? I don't know. Like I said, I'm not an ordained priest or anything. I'm just uh, a guy on uh, the internet. And now, but I do see that, uh, I love it how in the gospel, you know, Jesus is is talking about Abraham. He says that even before Abraham existed, I am. Letting him know that I am literally God down here as a human being. Wouldn't that be crazy? I mean, dude, talk about like, all right, what what is the um, undercover boss? Do you imagine undercover boss? This is undercover boss on steroids. This is undercover God. And he's, you know, becoming one of his uh, delinquent subjects. He's going in and he, he's starting from the bottom. He's, he's, he's being a, uh, a, a floor sweeper, right? It's undercover boss. That's what the Jesus story is. God came down from heaven and he wanted he he became a person just to show us the way because we weren't getting it we weren't figuring out we were not figuring it out we weren't learning by being told what to do we needed to be shown what to do it's all show versus tell and so basically yeah that's what i should have done for this show I, oh man i should have said jesus is just like undercover boss that should have been the title the Jesus story is like undercover boss. Darn it. Instead, I, Jesus played hide and seek with the Jews. How ignorant is that title? Please don't, don't be dissuaded by my titles. They're all in good fun. I'm just being, uh, you know, sarcastic, not sacrilegious and not anti-Semitic either. I love everybody. Now let's talk about the saints of the day. Shall we? The, the main saint of the day is uh, this guy right here. And I got this card right here from Aggie, Hagiogra Faith over on uh, Facebook. I love telling, you know, where I got my citations from. Where is that, uh, that card about Hagiogra Faith on Facebook? There we go. This is where I go and I get my daily saint cards. Just these ones right here. The other ones I make myself, the, the other, the more elaborate one. But this this one from March 30th, the priest with the gift of tears. St. Pedro Ragalado. He is also known as St. Pedro of Valladolid. He was a Spanish Franciscan priest. He was a noted reformer. By setting a good and pious example, he observed nine personal Lenten periods a year, fasting on bread and water. His care for his brothers in need and his love for the sick became proverbial. He had the extraordinary gifts of bilocation and prophecy. He also had the gift of tears, which showed his love of God and the poor. The gift of tears, huh? What is that? Hold on one second. Let me look at that up. Gift of tears um, in, in, in Catholicism. Okay. Uh, demystifying the gift of tears. Um, the gift of tears. Okay. That's like a whole article. I can't get into that. Right. What is it? 
what it exactly is to get to tears. Uh, uh whatever. Anyway, let's let, we'll, what we'll do is let's read the actual thing that I created for for today, the saint today. This is from Franciscan Media. Maybe we'll talk about the gift of tears. If not, we'll take another look on Google. Peter lived at a very busy time. This is about St. Peter Ragolato, his story. Peter lived at a very busy time in history. The Great Western Schism, which was 1378 to 1417, was settled at the Council of Constance in 1414 through 1418. France and England were fighting the Hundred Years' War. And in, in 1453, the Byzantine Empire was completely wiped out by the loss of Constantinople to the Turks. At Peter's death, the age of printing had just begun in Germany. Yay, printing! And Columbus's arrival in the New World was less than 40 years away. Wow. Peter came from a wealthy and pious family in Valladolid, Spain. Spain. At the age of 13, he was allowed to enter the Coventual Franciscans. Shortly after his ordination, he was made superior of the friary in Aguilar. He became part of a group of friars who wanted to lead a life of greater poverty and penance. In 1442, he was appointed head of all the Spanish Franciscans in his reform group. Peter led the friars by his example, a special love of the poor and the sick characterized Peter. Miraculous stories are told about his charity to the poor. For example, the bread never seemed to run out as long as Peter had hungry people to feed. Throughout most of his life, Peter went hungry. He lived only on bread and water alone. Immediately after his death on March 30th, 1456, his grave became a place of pilgrimage. Peter was canonized in 1746. Here's the reflection of today. Peter was an effective leader of the friars because he did not become ensnared in anger over the sins of others. Peter helped sinning friars rearrange the priorities in their lives and dedicate themselves to living the gospel of Jesus Christ as they had vowed. This patient correction is an act of charity available to all Franciscans, not just to superiors. That's good not to become en ensnared in anger over the sins of others. Don't do that. That's what happens all the time. People always are, you know, trying to critique others. Just love them as they are. Love them as they are. And then a little birdie sent me a message. Oh, the Bible, not in the catechism. Okay. It's a phenomenon mentioned in spiritual writers since very early in the church, and it refers to an intense personal... They were talking about the tears, right? Talking about the tears again? What was it again? It was called... Uh, he also had the gift of tears. Gift of tears, yeah. Gift of tears. Gift of tears. It's not mentioned in the Bible nor the catechism. It's a phenomenon mentioned in spiritual writers since very, very early in the church. And it refers to an intense personal experience of God that overflows in abundant tears. It is the overflow of a spiritual experience and an emotional, physiological expression that creates deep comfort in one's soul and deep encouragement for the person who receives the gift, as well as sometimes for others who happen to witness it. Okay. I think I've had something similar to this when I was thinking about Mary really hard. I was meditating on Mary super hard because I lost my mom. You know, she passed away and uh, I, uh, I, I started crying. And I, I think that that's kind of what it is because you just feel the connection between God very real and it gives you great comfort. I, I understand that. I definitely understand that hundred percent. So um, let me, let me continue with some of the Hag Hagiogra faith over on Facebook. Some of their uh, saint cards here. And we'll go over some of the venerable mentions for March 30th. How about a founder of the Gray Friars and Sisters, Saint Ludovico of Casoria. He was an Italian Franciscan priest and founder. His original name was Archangelo. Wow, his name's literally Archangel. 
Palmentieri. And people, you we live up to our names. Words are everything in this life. Words are everything. We shape our existence through our words. Like it could be scientifically measured and proven. It's scientifically measured and proven. Holy water. The, the reason holy water. You ever take some water and play some music to it or whatever? You know, you ever seen those experiments? The Mendelin effect? Mandela, Men, Mendelin? I don't know. Not the Mandela effect. Mendelin. This guy. Mendel. Mendel. He's... He, you 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 can see it. You can see it in ice cube ice cubes and stuff like that. You can if you look very closely in a microscope, you can see the uh, these patterns emerge. That is, uh, it's like crazy geometric patterns that are within water, all forms of it. And you wonder why um, holy water is holy when a priest prays over it. They use their words becomes holy it's 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 scientifically proven and uh when these so what i'm saying is somebody's name arcane archangelo you're gonna live up to that name it's it's crazy so beware of what you name your children because they might become a priest a maria might become a nun you never know anyway uh, he served the poor. He founded orphanages and dispensaries. He opened a school dedicated to educating young Africans who had been ransomed from slavery in a school for the death. Deaf. He later founded the Frati Bigi della Carita, the Gray Fri- Friars of Charity, and the Franciscan Sisters of St. Elizabeth. The Gray Sisters, the Friars, were later disbanded. Ah. All right, let's continue. I have some more. I got some more of these. Let's let's go through some of these. How about a model for African American women? Servant of God Thea Bowman. Oh, we've we've talked about Thea Bowman before. They have a great documentary out about her. She's awesome. Today is her death anniversary. She was an African American nun from the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration. Her original name was Bertha Elizabeth Bowman. She became an evangelist among her people. Assisted in the production of an African-American Catholic hymnal. Helped support African-American women in Catholic religious institutes. She was a popular speaker of faith. Anybody wants to know more, you got to check out Servant of God, Thea Bowman. Please Google her. Google her. She's awesome. She was uh, around in the 60s, 70s eras. You know, that whole, that whole black, uh, you know, activist type of person that's that was what she was back then and she was a nun fascinating story how about this the uh also for the 30th of uh of march All right, we're getting to april now baby we got the aries time coming on well i think we're already in aries time refused to remove hospital crucifixes blessed maria restuta kafka some kind of a Slavic, right? Or Eastern European. She was a Czech Franciscan nun and martyr. Her original name was Helene Kafka. She worked as a nun in a public hospital. While working as a nun, she felt her religious vocation. She joined the Franciscan Sisters of Christian Love. She was the head surgical nurse in a hospital. During World War II, the Nazis uh, demanded that all crucifixes in hospitals be removed. She refused to obey. She was arrested and guillotined for her faith. Oh, my God. All right. The happy Duke, Blessed Amity the Ninth. He was also known as Blessed Amadeus of Savoy. He was a French married layperson. He had 10 children. Good for him. God bless him. Just like Abraham. Very, very fertile. He was a duke. Known as a just and charitable ruler, he promoted the church in his realm and personal holiness in his subjects. This is the reason why he was nicknamed Happy. Oh, the Happy Duke was a particular protector of Franciscan friars and endowed endowed other religious houses as well as homes for the care of the poor and suffering. Good guy. Let me continue on. I got some more of these. These are good. I love, I love learning about this in the morning. First thing in the morning. It's great to learn. 
How about this? The teacher of abandoned youth, St. Leonardo Murialdo. He was an Italian priest and founder. He took on the ministry of uh, taking care of the poor. He made ways so that the youth would receive quality education. He also sought ways of, to develop the spirituality of workers and fought for their rights. He was the first to establish a Catholic union of workers. He also established Catholic libraries. He founded the Congregation of St. Joseph, which te teaches abandoned youth. He's a founder. All these saints are always founders. Saints are either founders or great writers and orators, great communicators, usually writers, because it takes time to read over your writing, their writings, and realize how awesome they were later on. That's when they usually get canonized and stuff. But anyway, got like four more of these. A beheaded soldier, Saint Secundus of Asti. Secundus, that's uh, probably Latin, right? Let me look. He was a second century martyr. He was a soldier with a low rank, which probably meant that he was a young man. He was later converted to Christianity. It is said that he became a wanted man after he provided Christian burial to St. Martian of Tortona, who was martyred. Martian influenced his decision to convert to Christianity. He fled to his family in Asti. There he was captured, he was tortured, and eventually he was beheaded. Okay. Next up in the venerable mentions, St. Lucy appeared to him angry. This person is named St. Zosimo of Syracuse. He was an Italian bishop. He was made to join the monks when he was still a child. But due to his immaturity, he did not like the life in the monastery and left. When he returned, he saw a vision of St. Lucy, the patron of the monastery, who seemed angry at him. He lived as a monk for 30 years. He was later known as the abbot and made a bishop. He was known for his charity to the poor and his work to educate his parishioners. That was St. Zosimo of Syracuse. Okay. And then uh, last but not, oh wait, this isn't the last but not least. This is a runner up. Apolo apocalyptic thinker. An apocalyptic thinker. Oh. Joaquino of Fiore. He was a prolific writer on ascetics, clerical reform, and biblical studies, including treaties on the Gospels, an exposition on Revelations, and a concordance of the Old and New Testaments that were based on a moment of insight. He was given upon waking one Easter morning. Several of his theories, especially about the Trinity, were condemned by the church. Never officially beatified, he has been referred to as Beatus since his death. Okay, yeah. Like I said, venerable mentions. These aren't these are people that are might not even be totally venerated yet. This is the last but not least. Mormon turned Catholic mystic. Servant of God, Cora Louise Evans. Wow. Okay. This is her death anniversary. She was an American married layperson. She was born and raised as a member of the Church of Christ and the Latter-day Saints, Mormons. She converted to the Catholic Church. She had visions of Jesus and Mary. After experiencing ecstasy, sometimes lasting for many hours, she would use a typewriter and attempt to record what was revealed to her. Wow. Meditation. Hyper meditation, baby. Yeah. All right. So that, that does it with our saints of the day. I was I I didn't like I said I didn't really prepare any um today's just going to be a straight up show and uh, I'm going to go to mass and and whatnot um what did I have I had one one piece of purgatory news that I could share I think that I got this morning off Catholic Twitter um oh you got to subscribe to keep reading oh no I got it yay. Let me share my screen. There we go. Let 
Got the thing in the middle. I'm sorry about that, guys. Uh, apologize about that, but all right. So the tabernacle stolen from murdered bishops' residence in Los Angeles. You guys remember that a couple uh, weeks ago or whatever that uh, the the L.A. Um, uh, auxiliary bishop was murdered. The L.A. Sheriff's Department confirmed to Life Site News that the tabernacle was stolen from late Bishop David O'Connell's residence before March 24th and March 26th. What? Los Angeles, a tabernacle has been stolen from the residence of the late Bishop David O. McConnell, auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, who was murdered in his home in Hacienda Heights on February 18th. LifeSite News has confirmed directly with the L.A. Sheriff's Department that between Friday, March 24th and Sunday, March 26th, a tabernacle was stolen from the late bishop's residence, the scene of his murder just over one month ago. An investigation is being conducted into the burglary. The, the neighborhood of the residence is under video surveillance for security which the Sheriff's Department said would be used for the purpose of the investigation. On February 18th, Bishop O'Connell was found dead shortly before 1 p.m. in a home in the 1500 block of John Lou Avenue in Hacienda Heights. L.A. District Attorney George Gascon stated in a press conference on February 22nd that the suspect arrested by police, Carlos Medina, admitted to having killed the bishop while claiming that O'Connell owed him $20,000, claimed that investigators have said they dismissed as a credible motive behind the murder. In a trial hearing last week, on March 22nd, Medina denied charges in court, pleading not guilty. Wow. The DA revealed at the February 22nd press conference that O'Connell had been hit by multiple shots, with sources saying five, in contrast to earlier police reports that indicated that deputies had found O'Connell with a gunshot wound to his chest. Uh, the theft of the tabernacle comes as Archbishop Gomez conducted a six mile Eucharistic procession through the streets of downtown LA on Saturday for the feast of the Annunciation in an effort to renew faith in devotion to the blessed sacrament. Wow. Yeah. So they probably wanted to use that, right? They probably were looking to use that in the procession. And like, like I said, speaking of the procession, I'm going to talk more about that tomorrow. I'm going to have the, the procession highlights tomorrow and uh what else um oh i'll talk about my uh my time going to latin masses uh up in connecticut it was great i love it i love it there i love it. the bridgeport diocese is very good very good diocese i really really appreciate it and love it i want to get some of those um la those latin priests on from the diocese I'm hoping to do that really, really soon. Huh. All right, let's do our um, Latin of the day, and then we're going to get out of here because I got to go to... Bobby's got to go to church and then print some T-shirts. Enzo.com It's time for the Latin word of the day. Woo! Uh, Latin word of the day. Latin word of the day is... Uh, oh, or occultatio. I think it's occultatio. 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 It sounds like occult, right? The occult. The occult probably has some of, uh, you know, it's Latin roots in this word. I'd imagine. Uh, it comes from, pardon me, by the way. It means concealment or hiding. You know, Jesus was playing hide and seek with Jews. They were going to about to stone him to death for, for saying that he knew Abraham before he was around. But, you know, he knew Abraham before Abraham was even Abraham. What are the etymology of word occult? Let me do a quick Google search on that. Uh, from Latin word occultus, clandestine, hidden, secret. See that? I knew it. Knowledge of the hidden. Wow. Occult refers to knowledge of the paranormal as opposed to knowledge of the measurable, usually re referred to as a science. Look at that. So clandestine, hidden. So you see the hidden word in there in occult. Knowledge of the hidden. 
And also one of the synonyms, a very close synonym, is absconditus. Absconditus. You know, like, absconded? You like, absconded? What did you do when you abscond from things? What does absconded mean? What does absconded mean? Abscond. Leave hurried and secretly, typically to avoid detection of an arrest or an unlawful action such as theft. She absconded with the remaining thousand dollars. So to like get away in a hidden way. Look, so abscond, 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 uh, absconditus to hide away or conceal. Wow. I love studying the Latin of the day because you learn so much. Look what we learned. We learned that the root word for hiding can be found in the word occult. Crazy. All from just talking about God, talking about Jesus, talking about the gospel. Man, I'm going to get a nice meditation in today because I'm going to be uh, getting there early for a change. I hope there's no uh, funeral. Oh, I can't deal with a funeral today. Let's do the meditation of the day. Meditation of the day. Meditation of the day uh, entitled Trusting in the Lord's Saving Word by a servant of God, Luis Maria Martinez. We are so inclined to mistrust, to be anxious, seems to us. What is it? Oh, by the way, sorry. Um, Archbishop Martinez, he's still alive. He, he was born in uh, 1956. He's a spiritual author of the first official primate of Mexico. He's the author of the recently translated work, Am I Not Your Mother? Reflections on Our Lady of Guadalupe, published by Magnificon. Okay. Trusting in the Lord's saving word. We are so inclined to mistrust. To be anxious seems to us so natural a thing that often... We try to withdraw from the peace that God has given us. We wonder if it can be an illusion. We scrutinize to see if we may not have reason to be disturbed. Perhaps it occurs to us to say, how is it possible to live in peace without uneasiness in this sad exile so far from our blessed fatherland, exposed to the loss of our happiness forever? Could the Israelites live without worry? when they were wandering over the desolate sands of the desert so far from the promised land and so exposed to the possibility of never reaching that land overflowing with milk and honey. There are at least two justifiable motives for anxiety. First, will that happy day ever come in which the intense yearning of my soul for close union with God be truly satisfied or shall I remain like Moses contemplating the promised land from Mount Nebo, without ever setting foot therein. A second, apparently legitimate reason for anxiety is this. If God loves me, if I am in his arms, from this viewpoint, I should have no fear. But my frailty and my malice, which daily become more evident to me, will they not withstand the holy scrutiny of divine love? It is true that Jesus carries me in his arms, but do I have the unfortunate prerogative of extricating myself. Jesus certainly loves me, but shall I also love him? Shall I be faithful? Do these causes of anxiety exist in reality? No. At first sight, they seem warranted, but our Lord placed in our soul some gifts so rich that they of themselves establish us in peace. One of these gifts is the divine virtue of hope a heavenly virtue, yet a forgotten virtue. How few souls give this neglected virtue the importance that it deserves. Practically minded, we are preoccupied with more human virtues, more in touch with earth, mortification, humility, obedience. Some persons look upon hope as an impractical virtue, almost useless. Nevertheless, hope is an eminently practical virtue. It is the virtue that drives far from our heart the specter of discouragement, the most frequent dangerous temptation in the spiritual life. 
is the inseparable companion of suffering. It confirms and strengthens peace in our soul. Amen. All right. Let's do the Fulton Sheen of the day. This is the, the wisdom of Fulton Sheen. Wisdom! I don't know, man. Of Charlie Sheen. That's all I want. I have one speed. I have one ear. Go for it. You can never be commanded, for example, to like picking up a heart. You know how face we are. Outstanding. I'm too smart. I'm too smart. I love it. That's epic. What is the wisdom of Fulton Sheen, baby, for the day, May, May 30th? Oh. A mirror is silent, yet it reflects for it, for A's, sunsets, flowers, and faces. Great ascetic souls given to years of meditation have taken on a radiance and a beauty which are beyond the outlines of faces. They seem to reflect like the mirror on the outside, the Christ they bear within. All right. And then last but not least, of course, we always round out our podcast episode with a Catholic Prayer of the day. Let's do that. Enzo.com. It's time for the Catholic prayer of the day. Very professional, Patty. Good job on the soundbite. And dude. now for some completely fictional bullshit. <laughs> Stick to the credo, Patty. Stick to the credo. Outstanding. Pow. And in our pre-prayering today, we're of course going to ask for the intercession of Saint Pedro Regalado. Saint Pedro Regalado, please pray for us. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for life. Thank you for love. Thank you for listening. Thank you for letting us podcast today. I really appreciate you. I pray for the godless swine of this world, all of us, me included, to turn towards your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And I'm including in that everybody in this God's green globe. Or... A uh, flat surface with firmament on top. I don't particularly know, and I don't particularly care what the sh- shape of the earth is, but I pray for all of its inhabitants. Let me be quiet now so you guys can offer, you know, your intentions that's in the silence of your hearts here and throughout the world. Okay. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, I'm going to say one intention that I I really, I just want those boys over up there in Washington, D.C. that are uh, in court right now for just seditious uh, conspiracy. Those J6 boys. Those proud boys. And I'm trying, I know I'm not... If you even mention that, right, you get canceled. But who cares, man? I'm just, I'm, I want to pray for those guys that they don't get found guilty on seditious conspiracy because they didn't do it. They didn't do it. Whoever, everybody that was there on that day on January 6th, all the Trump supporters that were called there by Trump, they fell to the stupid game of what they had been falling to before for the last couple of years, criticizing all of these people that were protesting in the streets for George Floyd. Maybe they even had a good reason to protest. And a lot of Republican and right-leaning people, they just cast judgments on them for the mob mentalities that they were getting into. And and look at them, they got into a mob mentality too. So, Lord, I just want everybody involved in that, everybody, all the prosecutors, all the people in the government that are going after people, please let everybody just take a step back be calm, chill, and have peace in their lives lives, and forgive others and move on and heal this country. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Lord, we offer these prayers for the souls of the sick who are in desperate need of a physician. May they accept your son, Jesus Christ, in their hearts as their personal Savior who lives again and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Secular, secularum. Nomine Patri, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. The podcast is ended. You guys can go in peace to love and serve the Lord and be outstanding, outstanding. to Pow. each other. All right? Thank you very much for tuning in for to me and my dog, Buddy, on this 213th One, two, episode three. of the Fat Enzo Fat Show. Enjoy Enzo your day. Com, fat. Your Enzo Thursday. Com, fat. Enzo and enjoy com, your weekend, fat. you know? I'll be, I, I'm going to jump com. on here tomorrow. So. But if you don't catch the show, enjoy your weekend. Jesus played hide and seek with the Jews. The best, the better idea for, you know, the better title for the show would have been if I was a smarty. I thought of it last night when I was preparing. Would be that Jesus is like undercover boss on steroids. That's the better way to say it. Jesus is undercover boss on steroids. I'm going to make that a t-shirt. Jesus is undercover boss on steroids. All right. Anyway, this has been your based Catholic liturgy program, guys. I got to go to mass, meditate. Remember, meditation plus God equals peace. Vaya con Dios. Outstanding.